Hi everyone and welcome to another Fusion 360 challenge of the month. Earn an Autodesk certificate of project completion by joining the Fusion 360 monthly challenge. And if you want to find out more about our monthly challenge, you can type Fusion 360 monthly challenge on your favorite search engine. And joining the monthly challenge is very easy. All you have to do is email us your full name, school, or company name to Autodesk Community Philippines at gmail.com. Welcome to August Monthly Challenge. Let's create a new design by heading to File, Selecting New Design. Our challenge is in the units of inches. I'm going to go to Document Settings, select Change Active Units. Change the unit type to inch. Hitting OK. Let's begin creating this feature. I'm going to hit L to grab our line tool. Prompted to select a plane, let's select our XZ plane. Notice in our cursor, there's a curved arc connecting to a line, meaning that our line tool can create an arc as well. To demonstrate this, I'm going to place my first point here, left click, and my second click would be left click and hold. I'm still holding and pressing my left mouse button, release, left click here, and let's close this one as a profile. Hitting escape. Once more, left click and hold to create an arc in the line tool. Let's add constraints to the sketch entities. This line obviously needs to be vertical. Selecting this line, right click and select horizontal vertical. It's always a best practice to make our geometry symmetrical. So let's place this line midpoint to our origin. Heading to midpoint, selecting our vertical line and our origin. Tangent constraint already applied. I'm going to hit escape to disable constraints and grab our line tool hitting L. Let's create the slot here. Left click, left click and hold to create an arc. Left click and hold and release to this endpoint. Hitting escape, applying the obvious, this one, our arc and our line needs to be tangent. So selecting them both, right click and select tangent. To determine what constraints need to be applied, it is always a best practice to move our entities. So moving this center point. Our center points obviously needs to be aligned horizontally with our origin. So let's grab our horizontal constraint, select our origin and select this center point. Hitting escape. Next, obviously this arc and this arc needs to be concentric. Selecting concentric, selecting this arc and this arc. Our sketch geometry now identical to our 2D drawing. Let's now grab our dimension tools, hitting D. Let's select this vertical line and this center point. Left click here to place our dimension. I'm going to key in 1.5, hitting enter. Next, the distance between the center point and this center point is 1. Hitting enter. The radius of this arc needs to be 0.88. Hitting enter. The radius of this arc needs to be 0.38 as well. Notice our sketch entities turned into black, meaning now they are fully constrained. I'm going to hit escape to disable dimension. And from here, we can now hit E directly for extrude, prompted to select a profile, selecting this sketch profile, 
Let's go to home view. I'm going to pull this blue arrow down. And to be exact, let's key in negative 0.38 direction going down. Operation U body and hit OK. Moving forward, let's create the feature here. Hitting L to grab our line. And from here, we may be tempted to sketch on this face. It's okay as well. But my suggestion, the best option would be at the middle. And this middle plane is our XY plane. I'm going to place my first point here at this edge. Move up. Left click. Left click. Left click and connect this to this endpoint. Left click. Hitting escape. Question, do we need to add a parallel constraint here? The answer is no. Why? Because we already have a perpendicular constraint. Now, if I remove this constraint, we can add parallel. So selecting this line and this line, right-click selecting parallel. Let's select this one. So this one obviously needs have a perpendicular constraint so let's grab this line and this line right click select perpendicular zooming in obviously this one needs to be horizontal or collinear any of the two is okay let's apply collinear for now selecting this edge and this line hitting escape the thickness of our feature is 0.38 as well. Hitting D to grab our dimension. Selecting this line, this line. Drop our dimension here. Keying in 0.38. And the length of this line to be 1.5. Keying in 1.5. Hitting escape. Move our entity. So we need to add the angle here, hitting D, selecting this line, this horizontal edge. Left click here to place our dimension. Key in, 60, hitting enter. Our sketch entities turned into black, but I am not seeing an indication of a profile. And inspecting. This one needs to be closed, hitting L. Let's close this one. Left click here and left click here. Hitting escape from here. We can now grab our extrude tool, hitting E. Select this profile. Grab our arrow. And under direction, let's change this one to two sides. And for the extent, select two object. Side 2 as well, 2 object, left click this arrow and this face. We are seeing an error. It is because the chain faces needs to be extend faces. So left click this arrow and left click this face. I made the wrong selection. So moving forward, reselecting this arrow. Or better yet, activating this one, selecting this face, changing the chain faces to extend faces. We finally got it right and hit OK. The advantage of two sides and two object is if ever our diameter increased, let's say it turned into one, I'm going to go to stop sketch automatically this feature will inherit the radius as well I'm going to hit undo go to stop sketch another quick tip to confirm we can always select an edge and at the bottom right corner 
we are given the dimension of the selected entity and confirm it's now 0.88. Before we add our holes, what I am seeing is that our hole is concentric with our fillet, meaning we have to create the fillet first before adding the hole. So I'm going to hit F to grab our fillet, select this edge, and this edge, the value to be 0.43, hitting enter. In addition, we can create a circular cut here. And instead of doing that one, let's discover the whole command. But first, we need a reference. So I'm going to sketch a reference for our hole. Hitting C for a circle, select this face, zoom in. Let's create a circle here. Diameter to be 0.5, same with our hole. Hitting enter. Next, select this arc and our circle. Right click and select concentric. Let's make this one as a construction circle. I'm going to go to stop sketch, hit S, and type HO, grabbing hole. The placement to be at point or single hole. Let's select this. face and snap this blue dot to our center point. So notice it snaps. Let's now key in the values. Counter bore diameter to be 0.5. Inner diameter to be 0.25. Counter bore depth to be 0.125. And tip angle. I'm going to leave it at its default state. Extents, I want this to be going through. So selecting all. And finally hit OK. Our sketch is visible. So I'm going to turn this off. Turning off sketch 3. And instead of grabbing our hole, we can hit S. And I'm guessing you are thinking about mirror selecting mirror the pattern type is features and that feature is our whole activating mirror plane selecting our xy plane compute option to be adjust and hit ok and the highlight of this monthly challenge is the rib command so a rib uses an open sketch curve to create a thin feature and the rib tool is usually used to add structural integrity to a specific model. Let's now grab our line to create our sketch reference. Selecting XY plane, let's drop our first point here at the end point and drop it here. At this horizontal edge, hit escape and hit D to grab our dimension. Let's dimension the distance between this point and this end point. Left click here to place our dimension. The value for this one to be 0.75. Hitting enter and hitting escape. From here, we can now select stop sketch. Hit S to grab our model toolbox, type R, I, and select rib. The curve to be this line, thickness, symmetric, depth options, to next. The thickness to be 0.25. Inspecting. Finally, hitting OK. And congratulations for completing the August monthly challenge. Awesome. This video tutorial is brought to you by MSI Workstation WT726QN. Keep practicing and keep joining our 
Fusion 360 monthly challenge and we hope to see you all as Fusion 360 certified user.